Good afternoon and welcome to Anguilla. Doing something a little bit different today. We're going to go back to some general aviation flying. And uh, this is a great airplane to do it in. Uh, let's see here. Yes, that's what we're looking for right there. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, state saving, da da da. Okay, all that stuff is good. Alright, so let's get rid of that and let's get this airplane started. I haven't flown this thing in forever. Let's go rotating beacon on. Mixture is rich. Prop is full forward. Carb heat is cold. Let's go master switch on. Ah, they're over here. <laughs> right? It's always good to know. Uh, fuel pump on. That's always good to know. Uh, let's go throttle open a quarter inch. Let's engage the starter here. And it comes in. And we didn't turn the fuel on, did we? Uh, I knew exactly what it was as soon as I did it. Let's hit the starter again. And she hums right to life. Alright, let's bring the power back here a little bit. 1200 should be good. Lean the mixture just a little bit. Alright, let's turn our nav and strobe lights on. I want to make sure I know which one's the pedo heat. Alright, there's the pedo heat. Uh, let's turn the fuel pump off. Check the fuel pressure. Fuel pressure is good. Oil pressure is good. Alright, uh, I think we're looking pretty snazzy here. Two, two, eight. Uh, let's go to our flight plan. That is looking just mighty fine. We're gonna do. I think I'll put my not uh, some um, transponder seventeen. Now that's fine. Uh, PJM VOR is what exactly? 130 113 0 we are on vlock because we're using VORs today when was the last time you used VORs in Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, let me see here real quick Let's see if this works heading no, let's see if the course works. That does work. Alright, so of course it's going to be 208. Cool. Um, Alright, so uh, let's get a... Let's get an altimeter setting here. 1016. Where is the altimeter? So that is the equivalent of three zero zero zero. All right, and I don't think we have any uh, air traffic controller out here, and we don't. So let's see here. Let's turn our taxi light on. Let's engage the brakes. Let's release the parking brake. And let's get going here. CJ Lloyd Traffic, uh, Arrow, Foxtrot, Golf, Juliet, Charlie Bravo, taxiing to runway 11 via Taxiway Bravo, Anguilla. Uh, this is, of course, the brilliant Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport from SLH Sim Designs. You can get this. Uh, at flightsim.to. I mean, it is ex an exact rendering of this airport. It's unbelievable. Um, 
and we can also uh, you can also get it at uh, simmarket.com. Awesome, awesome uh, rendering of this airport. So um, I don't see any traffic coming into Anguilla. So we're going to make our radio calls here. We're going to back taxi a little bit. CJ Lloyd Traffic, uh, Arrow, Foxtrot Golf, Juliet, Charlie Bravo, back taxiing runway 114 departure, CJ Lloyd. And uh, I'm having fun already, actually, just taxiing this airplane. It's, you know, um, I love the TVM 930, and I will use the word love love that airplane um, it's got such amazing capabilities uh, it's the, the avionics are amazing um, and by the way I fixed my problem with had a problem with all kinds of wacky airplanes being here and that was I blamed it on um, Aerosoft Simple Traffic. What I should have blamed it on is the idiot who is using Aerosoft Simple Traffic, which is me. As you can see, I made a few uh, changes, and all of those uh, planes that I that I didn't want here are now gone. They used to have like you know huge jets here, and they are now no longer here, which is awesome. So anyway, I really like the the TBM a lot um, but this airplane uh, I was thinking about flying the Warrior I have the Warrior 2 which is the 160 horsepower fixed gear uh, and that's a fun plane too but I just wanted a little bit more speed for what I wanted to do today so um, we're gonna take off here from Anguilla and we're gonna fly VFR to um, to VC Bird on Antigua, we are going to do it um, VOR to VOR. We're going to go down uh, over St. Kitts. Uh, I just think that's it's probably the way I would choose to do it if I was really doing it. You go over kind of by uh, St. Eustatius and um, and St. Kitts, and then over to uh, Antigua. And the reason I would probably do it that way is because that's where there's some land underneath me in case I in case I need anything, you know, like a place to put down. So um, final approach path looks clear. Uh, bring the nose around here. Let's go. Mixture is rich. Prop is full forward. A heading indicator checks with the runway number. And we are ready to go. Let me just check something real quick here. Um, I didn't mean to spin you guys around there. I just want to make sure that my rudder pedals are set here underneath me. And they are. So we are in V-Lock. Which is what we want. So on course heading is 208. So let's engage the brakes. CJ Lloyd traffic TBM. Uh, Arrow Foxtrot Golf Juliet Charlie Bravo taking off runway 11 departure to the south. CJ Lloyd. All right, release the brakes. Takeoff power is coming in. Takeoff power is set. Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed is alive. 60. 70. 80 knots. And rotate. Alright, positive rate. Gear is coming up. One thing I didn't check was my trim. Now let's bring 
prop down to 25, manifold pressure 25, and we can make our turn out here. CJ Lloyd Traffic, uh, Arrow Foxtrot Charlie Bravo on a right crosswind departure off runway 11, departing to the south. CJ Lloyd. And look at that. That's a sharp looking airplane, too, isn't it? I really like this blue and green uh, livery as well. I think we are going to get some. VFR or some IFR possibly here today. I did not file IFR, but not really too too worried about it. already that the uh, I'm going to make a change in the GTN over here because it's got my map is course up and that's not what I want track up off let's go back there we go okay climbing at 90 knots over here to intercept the uh, intercept my course here need a little bit more right rudder and I mean, to me, this is uh, this is a little bit more like flying. You know, the only thing I really wish, and this air, I don't think they have. Um, the only thing I wish I had would be a glass cockpit in this airplane. Um, I I used to be sort of anti-glass cockpit. Now I'm really pro-glass cockpit, and the reason is I've got a glass cockpit in the plane I fly in real life so I think it's I think it's uh, good to kind of keep your eyes uh, trained and what I mean by that is you get used to uh, you get used to either looking at round gauges or uh, or, or glass and the speed tape especially um, can can be a little tricky if you might if you're not if you haven't spent a lot of time flying glass cockpits recently And for some reason, this needle is not coming in. Should be. here and start leaning the mixture a little bit and there's an American Airlines flight coming in 
And actually, I think the American Airlines flight going to Anguilla, I think we just missed it, actually. So I think that's coming in right now, too. Clouds are looking great in good old Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think uh, already realizing one of the things that I miss about the, the TBM is just the speed and the power of the airplane. But because of the fuel situation here, so the uh, see I've been burning off the left tank so the plane is having a tendency to lean in one direction. And there is Simpson Bay, there is Princess Juliana, and look at that right there. That is the American Airlines flight out of Miami. I have taken that flight several times. There's Mary's Boone down there. Climbing through transition altitude. See the crowd. So now I need to be on a heading of 162. So let's get over to a heading of 162. And there is, Phil, uh, yeah, that's Phillipsburg. That is the capital of Dutch St. Martin. Keep leaning here a little bit. Almost at 6,000 feet already, which actually isn't too bad. See St. Bart's coming up over there here pretty soon. Oh, you never turn. Well, I never. <laughs> saying I never turned the fuel pump on, but I don't, I don't think I ever turned it on. Uh, let's go fuel pump to the right, or fuel to the right tank rather. Fuel pump off. Check our fuel pressure. Fuel pressure is good. Um, and there's going to be all these little niggles, all these little things you got to do in a in a uh, propeller airplane that you don't have to do in a turbine airplane, for example. And I may forget some of those things.
climb is getting a little bit sluggish here. 500 feet a minute. So we should see Sabo over there and St. Martin's over there. Seven thousand, we're looking to It really does feel like you're standing still in these airplanes. And there, right there, is good speed 154. That is presumably I mean, it is a uh, trade wind. I don't know where he's going, though. All right, 50, not 50 feet below our desired altitude. We'll start pitching the nose over. Come back to 24 squared, I think. Would be nice. Trim. I don't think he's going to St. Bart's. think so. I do think this airplane wants to still climb. So... Speed starting to pick up 130 knots, that's good. Airplane's still wanting to climb a little bit. There is St. Bartholomew. Is popping up here again. I think I'm 
just gonna let it just gonna let it uh, settle here a little bit and you can sort of see what my thinking is in terms of this flight um, from needle I do have a from needle I should have a from needle and you should know that so I've got st. Bart's over there They're, they've got an airport there's uh, Sabo over there they've got an airport do a uh, quick little bit of right rudder trim or not so bright rudder trim there we go still huh do, do, do. I guess we're going to keep going until you stop turning left. I guess you don't want to stop turning left yet. Unless I'm, <laughs> unless I'm turning it the wrong way. Which would be pretty funny. No, no, it's right. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. So let's see that. Uh, GT again. Okay, so. Peak EGT is right there. So let's. So you want to bring this red needle. That red needle is just a, is just a reminder. It's just you, you set that needle where your peak EGT is, and then we just push the red knob in until we drop about 50 degrees, which is right about there, give or take. And that is pretty much where your airplane is really happy. There's Stacia. Ahead of us we've got St. Kitts. And then beyond that is Nevis. So the reason why I wanted to fly rather than just straight across because you can let me bring the uh, I'm not using the autopilot I have no intention of using the autopilot in this airplane so I'm flying from here to here and I could of course just go in a straight line but if I were somewhere over here and something started going a little funky or if I started feeling unwell, or whatever the case might be, um, then um, then, and now I realize that once I got my power set where I wanted it, I needed to just for that uh, I didn't set my power after I got the uh, after I got my mixture where I wanted it again just not used to flying a piston single
so. So anyway, flight planning wise, what I've chosen to do is fly over top of St. Martin and down here along these islands and then make the little overwater excursion from St. Kitts over to Antigua and you think ah that's you're going you know out of your way and blah blah blah. It actually added a grand total of so instead of going straight across this way, going over here, down and then over, added a grand total of eight minutes to my flight. And in my opinion that's eight minutes well spent. because I am in a good spot during those eight minutes. Alright, so I never turned my landing light on either. My landing light on now. Gyro is good. Suction is five. What else we got to toy around with here. Did I turn my fuel pump off? I did. Don't know why the auto extension off button is flashing. I don't know if there's a way to say okay. There's the emergency gear lever which I don't want to activate. So I did a flight the other day over to Culebra. Uh, the island, uh, well, on the island of Culebra, which is a part of Puerto Rico. And um, one of the things that so I have to take a little break there and sneeze. Um, one of the things that occurred to me switch fuel tanks again here. Uh, let's turn the fuel tank, uh, fuel pump on. Switch to the left tank, turn the fuel pump off, and then check your fuel pressure. Make sure your fuel pressure is good. Um, but one of the things that I realized, I flew that flight in the TVM, there's Stacia by the way. And one of the things I realized, uh, during that flight was that, or actually I kind of realized it after, is that I wasn't really aware on my way into Culebra where the wind was coming from. Uh, and it kind of, it was actually straight down the runway but the way the approach is there you're coming in at a 45 degree angle and so um, I wound up getting pushed over you're coming in between these two hills and I wound up getting pushed over towards the right hill which didn't really give me that great of an angle into the runway Long story short, what I realized was that um, I, I, I hadn't been aware of what the winds were doing. And that was to my detriment. Um, I like to use flight simulation to keep my flying brain sharp. 
I haven't I haven't set foot in an airplane in a, in a real airplane since November. It's now April, uh, almost April. Um, but I love flying the TBM. Love flying the TBM. But at the, and and I love the avionics in the TBM. But at the same time, it does so much for you uh, that it almost makes you a little bit lazy. And, uh, so, basically, it just made me kind of think, you know what, you should get back into a, a GA airplane, uh, like a real GA airplane, not a, you know, six million dollar you know glass panel wonder and get back to doing some basic flying it's more in tune with what I would really be doing if I were flying and that's what I'm doing today um, of course, the, look at that, how cool is that? Um, there used to be an airport at this end of the island, I don't know, though, I'm not sure. I think too at some point I'm going to have to get into put myself in some situations where there's some actual IFR because there really isn't any um, to speak of in the Caribbean in the simulator anyway. It's funny how much time you have <laughs> to think about things in this airplane versus the amount of time you have to think about things in the TBM or the CRJ, which I've spent a decent amount of time flying. Um, really, the big difference... in flying fast airplanes uh, I mean this is this isn't slow I mean, 100, 140 knots I mean I wouldn't I, <laughs> if I were in real life flying 140 knots I'd be a happy guy um, as somebody who is used to flying you know at least somewhat less than that Um, oh, I just had a plane pass over top of me and I didn't even notice. Probably because I'm talking so much.
Um, When am I going to turn? Because this is a, a VOR instead of a uh, an RNAV waypoint, it's going to have me go fly right over the top of it. And I'm not going to get a flag reversal because I am still tuned to uh, Papa Juliet Mike in St. Martin. So now heading to 116. Do I see any of the airport below me? Not really. So now let's have a look over here. Easy. Dun da da. One fourteen five. Switch that, and then let's turn our knob here until we get a two indication, a two flag, which we already have, and a centered needle, and that's the course we fly to get to where we're trying to go. Basic VOR navigation, boys and girls. And VOR navigation, kind of like riding a bike. Just it's hard to hard to forget once you uh, once you get it in your noggin. Um, I don't know if my if my charts are in here or not. Yeah, they are not. So, uh, is it utilities? Uh, system. System status. Setup. Charts. I'm going to do that later. I don't feel like opening up the browser window right now. So... procedure though. Okay. Oh, this must be one of them is FAA charts and the other is um, jet charts. can set up a visual approach, but seemingly not going to let me do that. Load procedure. Anyway, um...
we are just going to fly to our fuel situation here. We got a lot more on the left side, or on the right side. Really, every 30 minutes you should change. off. Fuel pressure is good. Every 30 minutes you should change your fuel tank. Um, so let's start thinking about our approach here into TAPA, T-A-P-A, VC Bird International Airport. But first let's take a look at this beautiful, I think this is a really beautiful livery, this, this blue and green. It's Reminds me, it seems very Caribbean-ish to me. I don't know why. Um, but the other thing is, the Foxtrot, that's, it's a French registered airplane. Uh, this is one of the default liveries for the Arrow. And with the Foxtrot, uh, designation. It is a French registered airplane. And that, given the fact that there are a lot of French islands down here, St. Bart's, St. Saint, Saint, uh, Saint Martin has a French side, livery for the area. I'm going to miss my island if I don't pay attention to where I'm going here. So I think at about 25 miles I can start making a start making a little bit of a descent. Uh, let's have a look at the airport. Airport elevation is... Uh, airport elevation is 60 feet. Final approach course is 073. Kind of be coming in at an angle. Yeah, what? But uh, yeah. uh, you're gonna be coming in at a 45 degree angle to the final approach course. Uh, 
activate direct two. Right. So let's see, we're covering a little bit more than two miles a minute. Which means we've got Give or take 15 minutes to the airport. Uh, what else does that mean? Let's ask ourselves questions. What else does that mean? That also means it also means we need to get the weather. Let's start using our brain here. Uh, let's get the old weather here at VC Bird. Weather VC Bird. And I didn't set my altimeter to standard. Darn it. All right, uh, two nine or nine or seven is the altimeter. Even though my iPad reminded me to do so, I still didn't do it. Alright, uh, winds are 1208, variable from 070 to 120, 190, excuse me. So, uh, winds are variable from the east, southeast. Because I'm over water, I'm going to stay a little bit higher. Well, come back down here. to the field. start descending now. Alright. Transition altitude is what? Transition altitude is... Transition altitude is... 2,500 feet? Transition level is 4,000, okay. So, transition level is 4,000, which means that is where I make my altimeter change to 2997. It should right now be at 2992, which it's not because I didn't change it. Not when we took 
Um, I, I didn't change it in climb, that is. Uh, let's see what my trim is there. Okay. Tank am I burning off over right now? Well, seeing as it's tending to lean to the right, I'm going to burn off the left tank for the rest of the flight. Do pump off. I don't know. I, I may not have loaded a second person into the right seat, which is. Perhaps why it's leaning to the left. Uh, so. I need to look into how to properly descend in this airplane because I will freely admit that I don't really know. You know that that area over there is sort of where the approach is into the runway, and plus I have a clear path here through the clouds, which is good. So, no traffic really to think about. So we will just head in this direction. And this is what I'm talking about when I say that you've got so much more time. There's Antigua over there, that's the sister island. You've got so much more time to think about this stuff in this airplane. Uh, in the TBM, uh, well, in the TBM I probably would have been on an IFR flight plan and blah blah blah. Probably would have been a lot easier in, in many ways. Um, and I probably would have had it planned a little better ahead of time. But in this airplane, you've got plenty of time. Even though it's 100, like I said, 140 knots, not slow. But, you do have time to think. Which is good. Is there a VOR approach? Or an ILS approach, rather, into this island? I don't know. Let's look. I don't think so. There is an ILS, and I'll set the ILS. And there is not. So we're just going to do the visual approach. And I should be capable of doing that, let's hope. Getting sort of close to the uh, to the ten mile mark. We're going to make our call. There's the four thousand feet transition level. So we'll go two nine nine seven. Figure about right there. Uh, 
and winds again were uh, da, 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 da. one two zero eight variable from zero seven zero to one nine or zero so it's really going to be a left crosswind but variable doesn't seem like it's gusting which is good Alright, altimeter is set. Landing light is on. We're about 10 miles, we'll make our radio call. BC Bird traffic. Got Arrow Foxtrot Charlie Bravo is 10 miles to the west, inbound for the visual 07 BC Bird. Easy for me to say, right? I'm uh, going to bring the mixture back in here. Go mixture full rich. And make sure there's no traffic that we can see. I don't see any traffic. The, uh, inbound final approach course kind of bisects that outcropping of land right there but looks like if we go this way we're gonna get through these clouds a little bit better and we'll have a, a little bit better visual approach so we're gonna do that Start pulling the nose up just a little bit. Get rid of some airspeed. That's one spot in the simulator that's always been a little bit over, a little bit bleached, kind of, you know, which is a little too bright green. tell if I can see the airport yet. Transition altitude. Nearest altimeter. 1015. So she's kind of wrong about that. Transition altitude is for when you're departing, not when you're arriving. One of my gripes about this GTN 750 is it doesn't give you the approach, the visual approach uh, lines that you would get in a, with a GTN 750. It's kind of an important thing that would be nice to have in this uh, system, but they don't have it, so it is what it is. Uh, and there is the runway there. Alright, so we're going to go power way down here. That was not really good on my part. We see bird traffic, uh, Arrow Foxtrot Charlie Bravo on a 5 mile final runway 07, we see bird. down because I need to slow down and the flaps weren't really getting it done log 
put in another notch of flaps here. So 85 knots is what I want. The other thing I want to do is stay upright. Keep an eye on that. Uh, keep an eye on my heading indicator, or excuse me, on my artificial horizon as I'm coming down through this cloud here. BC Bird Traffic, Aero Foxtrot Juliet Charlie Bravo is on a three mile final runway seven, BC Bird. And I think this is going to be a good example of how not to fly an approach in an arrow. Um, Alright, mixtures full forward, props full forward. Bring the power back here a little bit. Because all right, gears down and indicating flaps are set. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I think I spent a little too much time flapping my gums and not enough time paying attention. Alright, we're in a good spot here. One mile final runway zero seven. BC Bird traffic team, uh, Aero Fox John Charlie Bravo short final runway seven, BC Bird. Alright. Speeds, all right. Oh, that landing stunk. I did get a <laughs> tiny bit of a crosswind correction in before I plunked it onto the ground, and I do mean plunked it onto the ground. Uh, so, let's uh, lean the mixture just a little bit, and let's apply some braking, and let's exit the runway here on Bravo. VC Bird Traffic, Aero Foxtrot Charlie Bravo is clear of runway 7, VC Bird. That's a big fat lie that nobody else will be able to tell. All right, so once we're clear of the runway, we will avoid the inevitable trucks. And let's clean up the airplane. Let's put the flaps up, mixtures leaned. Let's turn the, I didn't turn my fuel pump on, really good. All right, let's turn the landing light off. Let's turn the taxi light on. Uh, and I am going to taxi over this way solely because I want to show you this uh, this airport. It's a really cool airport. Um, this is payware. Uh, I bought this, and uh, it's a it's a pretty big airport in the Caribbean. And so if you do if you do get it, you will use it quite a bit because like I said, it's it's a very um big hub in the Caribbean, Antigua is. And so it's not one of those airports that you're gonna get and not use. And it's really nicely done. I mean, you see all the, the beautiful, colorful buildings around the airport. Um, the terminal itself. And looks really nice. Looks really sharp.
And I think it's extraordinarily unlikely that I would park here in real life, but hey, what are we going to do? Let's apply the brakes, pull the mixture, put the parking brake on. Let's turn our lights off. Let's turn the avionics master off, uh, which I don't think I really even have a switch for in this airplane. Ah, oh, there they are. I think no. Nope, that's the fan. Oh, well, we got the fan on, which is a good thing. Uh, da, 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 ba, 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 ba. All right, so here's where I admit that I don't know where the avionics master switch is. So let's turn the master and battery switches off. Turn the magnetos off. So normally you want to turn the avionics master off before you turn the master switch off but seeing as I don't know where the avionics master switch is I can't do that um, I would give myself not the greatest grade in the world I mean it wasn't bad it was it was safe but I think part of narrating these videos Sometimes I don't always have my brain focused on flying, whereas I, I should. Um, but um, the thing I like about it is that it's always a reminder of you learn something, you know. Um, and that's ultimately what I am trying to do. I hear a jet moving, but I don't see a jet moving. But anyway, uh, I confirmed for myself, there we go, I confirmed for myself that the uh, Arrow is a great little airplane. Handles really nicely, works very well, all the systems work very nicely, and just a fun plane to fly. And so, um, Pretty happy about it. Good flight today, all things considered. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you later.